What's up, everybody? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have yet another album review for you, even though releases are slowing down. There are still some key ones we definitely want to go over. And this is actually kind of a big one because this band has been kind of quiet for the last 17 years. So we are going to go over the latest offering from Sadus, The Shadow Inside. This comes out on the 17th of November on Nuclear Blast Records. This band formed in 1985 in Antioch, California. They actually broke up in 2015, took a couple years off and reformed uh, in 2017 without one of their founding members, a very famous gentleman by the name of Steve DiGiorgio, who was their bassist for a long period of time. And, well, I mean, he went on to do a lot of killer stuff and is still doing absolutely killer stuff here lately. So this is their sixth full length overall. This is their first one in 17 years. Their last one out for blood. Well, uh, I wasn't much <laughs> of a fan of, honestly. I, I heard one track and I was like, oh, no, not not my sadist. That's, that's not uh, what I want at all. Yeah, believe it or not, this is my first full exposure to Sadus. You know, the 80s for me were, were different than they were for a lot of kids uh, into metal. So uh, this is kind of skipped my radar. And yeah, I went back and listened to Out for Blood uh, per Nick's request. Nah. <laughs> yeah. But everything before that is fucking awesome. Uh, Vision of Misery, Shadowed in Black, Illusions, and I even like Elements of Anger, which was kind of divisive with some fans because they took a little bit more of a proggy turn. I think they just executed their sound super well. They're very talented musicians, and this is the first one they've done as a two-piece, I believe. This is just Darren Travis and John Allen. So Darren Travis is doing guitars, vocals, and bass on here, and then John Allen's just doing drums, which, believe me, he's doing drums on here. Like, he's, he's still absolutely awesome. But yeah, uh, I was kind of stoked for this one. I heard a couple of singles, like, dude, this sounds like old Sadus again. And yeah, uh, it does. Like this legit is like the best thing they've released since, God, I think it's better than Elements of Anger. So I would say all the way to like A Vision of Misery. I don't know what Old Sadus sounds like, but if it sounds anything like this, then I'm fucking on board. Right off the bat, the opening track, First Blood, opens up with a kind of clean, kind of like 80s rush vibe almost. The synths reminded me of Knight Rider. I'll, I'll admit it. Like I, I instantly got the credits like kind of stuck in my head and I could see Kit coming at me. I'm going to have to go home and... Find Knight Rider. Don't go watch, back and watch Knight Rider. I haven't watched Knight Rider in so long. Don't go back and watch Knight Rider. It's not as good as you remember. It's like He-Man. He-Man really? is not as uh, good as you remember. But I, that show whooped ass. You think it did. <laughs> anyway, uh, once we pass that big kind of like Maiden-esque opening, I would say, lots of very melodic riffs, and then just goes for it. Just bam, right out of the gate. Man, great drum work. Dude, Great fucking drum work. Yeah, dude, John Allen is put on a clinic on here. Like, his fills are super creative, lots of cool off-time rhythms, mm -hmm. and when he decides to just go for it and go for the speed, like, he is moving at Mach 10. There's all sorts of, like, cool syncopated gallops in his beats. Yeah, there are just tons of stuff. His turnovers are insane. To me, it was like a, a mixture between Gene Hoagland and Joey Jordison. Just insane, insane fucking fill work. Because when it first kicked in, like the drum sounded kind of compressed and I was like, man. But his performance just fucking takes it all. I do think they do sound a little bit compressed, but I mean, he's got like a great sound overall. Like it's just a little, maybe too tight, but man, the guitars sound crunchy and vicious. The riffs are just nuts on here. Like this is, you know, just hyper aggro thrash. It's almost kind of a return to their like flat out death thrash sound in the first three albums. Like there's definitely some stuff that is reminiscent of elements of anger in terms of like being a slightly more proggy, but for the most part, this is just heightened aggression and technical in like a riffy sense, not so much like a flashy sense. Yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no wank for sure. Technical, I guess in this case would be song structure because it's not, always like the typical verse chorus they love to throw in a lot of really riffy tags and the grooves change constantly a lot of off time stuff it's technical in that sense and honestly this first track is like kind of a sampler size for a good chunk of this album it's almost seven minutes long and it is a non-stop riff fest like they pretty much come out swinging and then just keep swinging after that I don't think there's like necessarily a big lull in this album at all because it's kind of pedal to the metal, but it doesn't sound 
you know, like, you know, they're kind of just repeating a lot of the same formula or anything. Like, there's a lot of cool dynamics to their songwriting. They can switch gears on you really quickly, like Scorched and Burnt comes in chuggy and groovy. Mm -hmm. It's got this awesome triplet chug that just drives it. It almost kind of sounds more akin to like more modern bands in terms of thrash, like Enforced or Power Trip. But then you get into songs like Anarchy, which opens up with some of the most sick turnovers on the entire album and just goes full throttle the entire time. Definitely drawing comparisons to bands like Slayer, of course. Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. definitely some Possessed in there. Coroner, for damn sure. Yep. And a little bit of Morbid Saint, too, because those guys don't get enough credit for being, like, just insanely heavy thrash. And we didn't look it up, but we think Chuck Billy might be on vocals in Anarchy. Yeah, we didn't have a physical copy of this, but it 100% sounds like Chuck Billy. Like, it's that just his token deep roar. But it's even the things, like, in a song like this where it is it is so aggressive and, like, you'd think like, okay, just D beats and balls to the wall. John even peppers in these really cool double kick stutters on the D beats, like on the tag of the D beat and just something else to, to make it even cooler. Like they didn't skip a fucking beat. Yeah. And while I would say like most of this album is like just very aggressive, like I, I just kind of got the sense that they were trying to make up for, you know, a little bit of lost time. Like, yeah, we really got to reestablish ourselves and, you know, just kind of give it to them. There's a lot of cool melody on here, too, mm -hmm. especially when you get down to the back half. Like, the front half is just vicious. Like, every track comes out, jumps you, gets your wallet, and then steals your car. Like, it's that aggressive. But when you get down to songs like Devil and Me, Pain, and No Peace, like, you start hearing a little bit more nuance in the songwriting. Like, the Devil and Me and Pain are a little bit slower overall. Like, they do eventually break into faster, thrashy sections because... I don't know, I feel like the band was just kind of like holding it in for a while, oh, like, yeah. oh, we gotta go fast. Yep. But No Peace in particular has like a lot of notes from Elements of Anger, like it's a little bit more proggy, more technical, and in terms of like song structure, it's just flat out awesome. Like the transitions on that song alone are just flat out amazing. I mean, the transitions on this entire record, I'm not gonna lie, are pretty fucking killer. On No Peace, not only are the, the transitions cool, but some of the catchiest riffs on the album, I think, are on that song. Shortly after this chuggy breakdown with these shreddy tags on them that are just really badass, the whole song closes out with this just repeating cool melodic riff, and like the, the timing on it's really neat, and it, it's really simple to get stuck in your head. Another song that does that is the song Pain. That song also has a super catchy riff and something really cool in my opinion, the lead and the breakdown are combined. Yeah, and the lead is really melodic. Now the lead work on here is generally kind of short, like generally it's like a quick shreddy thing and then it's on to the next insanely heavy riff. But like towards the end of the album, like I feel like the leads get a little bit more nuanced or they kind of like just play with them a little bit. Mm -hmm. This one was notably melodic, but it has this really cool breakdown underneath where the, the drum pattern's just kind of nuts. Like it's got this yep. cool kick pattern to it and there's like a little bit of a fill kind of mixed in. And the riff is very syncopated, but yeah, I just thought that to be kind of bizarre. Like normally, I can't think of too many bands, honestly, that would put together the lead and the breakdown riff. Like, n normally bands separate that to make the songs shine a little bit more, but these songs are so intricate anyway that, like, isn't that pretty cool that they would mix the two? Yeah, and even on No Peace, most of these songs, you know, will have just, like, one quick lead. That one actually has multiple leads, and they're both very mm -hmm. different. Like, you have one that's a little bit more shreddy, and then the next one is way more melodic and almost kind of atmospheric at times. And the song Ride the Knife, that song closes with just a flurry of Carrie King style dive bombs. Yep. So I mean like the lead work is kind of like all over the place but it fits generally what they're going for. Like Ride the Knife is just a sick gnarly song. It's fast, it's aggressive, but it has like these groovy pockets that are just, just ferocious. And that last one is this big kind of like almost Pantera-ish stomp yep. yep. and you gotta have like just the appropriate sort of lead on top of that and dive bombs. Dive bombs work and it's just the sort of flurry of them. And that's something that kind of contributes to the atmosphere. Atmosphere in here is kind of at a minimal but they have some stuff that really does contribute like the beginning of Devil and Me there's like almost like a creepy breath and that kind of opens like <sighs> yeah, like they're right up against the fucking microphone and just you know hopefully they get the spit guard on there. But that song has like almost kind of like an epic vibe. Mm -hmm. Like, 
it's it's not like cheesy epic. It's like I'll fight you epic. Uh, it kind of <laughs> comes in like uh, like maybe ten or fifteen overkill songs. Like it's rowdy. It's ready to fight. And then when you get down to the verse riff, I feel like that's a riff that Metallica has owed us for years. That's what I said. It's like, just yeah. like it has that big old school kind of like ride the lightning mm-hmm. hook to it. It's the fist pumper. And it's cool because it steadily builds in intensity. And then it takes one brief pause to catch its breath and then flat out explodes. And that kind of happens towards the end of the slower songs in mm-hmm. here. You're just waiting. There's going to be a thrashy explosion, and when it hits, yeah, you're, you're going to wreck your neck. About the only time, and when I say about the only time, I mean the only time that it really slows down, per se, is in the uh, instrumental kind of interlude, New Beginnings. To me, it kind of sounds like Sabbath meets like a, a quiet like ending of a crowbar record, um, and even a little bit of Orion, as far as the melodies are concerned. But even then, they still make it cool, because there's still that fucking snare march over it. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, like it, it has like a different atmosphere. It's almost kind of like bluesy. Mm-hmm. And generally, you know, I, I bitch about interludes, but this interlude works as a cool setup to the title track at the end, and it even incorporates melodies mm-hmm. from New Beginnings, yeah. so it's not a pointless interlude at all. So right. I can't bitch about it. That's why I'm going to let him talk yep. now. Yep, and the, sn- <laughs> the snare march still appears, but the shadow inside the title track, first of all, this record comes out swinging when it opens, and it ends so strong. One of my favorite tracks, the, the shadow inside, starts off with the same kind of somber, ambient melody that they had in New Beginnings, but then... When it does kick in, it's dark. It's almost doomy. When it does finally kick in, it kicks off with this really heavy groove and just sets up that song perfectly. It's very sinister, and what I like about the song is it's kind of a slow burn, like mm-hmm. for them at least. Like in, in most cases, like you know, with a lot of other metal bands that aren't playing like at Mach 10 all the time, this would probably be like, oh yeah, no, that's like kind of a mid-tempo one. For them, this is kind of a slow build. It steadily gets more heavy and more intense. It has a really cool atmospheric tremolo lead towards the end, which kind of like adds this kind of spacey atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And while it does get faster, it sinks back down at the end and closes on just an absolute banger of a riff. And yeah, banger riffs is pretty much this entire album. Pretty much this whole album feels just energetic, and focused, and just razor sharp, pretty much from start to finish. Like, with Out for Blood, it sounded like they were punching, like, you know, well below their weight. Like, yeah, we could knock out these riffs in, like, yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah, like, it sounded like the groove metal version of this. Like, and, the, and there's nothing wrong with groove metal, per se. No. But as a comparison to what this sounds like and what that sounds like, like, it's night and day difference. Yeah. And, I mean, as far as complaints on here, I really don't have many. Uh, it mostly comes down to the vocals, and it's not necessarily the vocal delivery. It's a lot of the effects. There's a lot of overdone effects, I think, on It's the Sickness, uh, Scorched and Burnt, and The Devil and Me. Like, there's, like, weird phaser stuff, and sometimes they kind of overlap vocal takes. I like Darren's vocals overall. I think he's just got a good, just snarling, mm-hmm. vicious-sounding voice. But all the extra you know, stuff that kind of pops up there. It sometimes feels like it's a bit much and you're taking away from, you know, just the absolute awesomeness of the music because it just kind of becomes a distraction. I really don't have any complaints either. Um, The compressed drums got me a little bit. And again, that was at the beginning before the insane drum performance, which to me just kind of pushes by the wayside the compressed drums. Overall, I'm going to give this four and a half stars. I thought this record was a fucking banger from start to finish. Even when this band speeds up, they don't lose the groove. And, like, the riffs are just entertaining. And there's a great mix of really fast barn burner type style to really slow just killer grooves man the chugs are insane the way that these songs are structured speaks to my prog side as well as my love of of faster metal and slower metal yeah like they're all entertaining i double starred every song um there's just there was a moment in every song where i was just like yeah yeah most of it is the drum work dude the drum work is fucking insane john allen good job my friend really good job 
Um, if you're a fan of bands like Testament, Enforced, Megadeth, Slayer, Pantera, Corner, Metallica, Anthrax, pretty much anything fast and, and heavy and awesome that you can think of, I'd recommend checking this out. How's that your end list looking? Fuck my year end list. <laughs> they, you gotta stop. Like, I, I, I'm thankful for awesome music, but you gotta stop. Because it's only 40, and there's way more than 40. <laughs> Uh, I am going to go ahead and give this a solid four, bordering on a four and a half. If anything, this is possibly my comeback album uh, of the year. Like, considering what they came from, you know, with the last album, the breakups, this is the best thing they have put out since A Vision of Misery. It is them back to their death rash roots, but they're still including a lot of that proggy nuance they had on Elements of Anger. This is an unbelievably tight sounding album like it is mm. pinpoint precision on everything they're doing here and it's not just basic stuff like a lot of these riffs are super intricate the drum patterns are fucking nuts like uh, in terms of like thrash metal drum performances this year this is <laughs> this is this is up there when steve DiGiorgio left the band i really wasn't sure about the future of the band like i was like oh man i i kind of i kind of don't know and uh this is pretty much uh, put to rest any doubts I have about this uh, going forward. This is an absolutely killer album. If you're a big fan of, again, Testament, Slayer, Possessed, Corner for damn sure, like lots of Corner vibes, even Atheist too. Mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm. more proggy side definitely leans close to that. Check this out. This is a certified banger. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel, but thrallsmetal.com is where you go to find thralls and metal stuff. We have t-shirts, we have new ones and old ones. The old ones are at a discounted price and we have hats too. So if you're looking for any of that stuff, thrallsmetal.com. And once again, tons of stuff going on at Thralls of Metal. It seems like there is never a dull moment here. We are never out of things to do. Still a ton of stuff coming your way, and although releases are going to slow down, we've got our end of year list that we're working on. Uh, we're going to start into the Black Dahlia murder uh, preparation for that ranking, so expect that at some given point. Uh, probably some States of Metal stuff. Uh, probably some retro reviews since the releases yep. will be slow. There's Definitely some bands we want to cover that didn't have enough, uh, you know, albums to rank. So, yeah, uh, tons of stuff. And last but not least, once again, thank you to all of you. We genuinely appreciate your support. You know, the fact that you guys keep talking to us is weird, but we'll allow it. Yeah, uh, it's been a ridiculous ride. Uh, and it's been fucking like 99.9% .9 amazing. Uh yeah, uh, we're going to continue to keep pumping out stuff, and hopefully we keep running to you guys in the shows and comments and such. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, you guys all rule, and if you don't know that by now, seriously, you haven't been watching to the end of these videos enough. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so once again, thank you all, and we will catch you later.